Hi, I'm Irasha from Sugar Salt and Sprinkles and welcome to another episode of Homemade on High TV. Today I will be making a recipe that's very dear to me and close to my heart. It is my late grandmother's sweet and sour pork chops which at its core is her recipe but I've updated it very slightly. So let's get started. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to marinate the pork and for that I'm going to first grate this jaggery. So this is quite a labour intensive process because the jaggery is quite hard. Uh, you can put it in a food processor and just whiz it up. I like using jaggery here because of the lovely caramelly depth of flavour that it has. Okay, I think I've got just about enough for the marinade. So I've got my jaggery grated. So into the bowl, I'm going to add some soy sauce. This will just give the pork a really lovely colour and a lovely saltiness as well. And now I'm going to add about a tablespoon of this jaggery. And I'm going to add some tomato sauce. And a little bit of chilli powder and some salt as well. So, I'm going to use my hands now because I really want to massage this marinade into the pork um, because this will give the pork a really lovely flavour. So really get it inside all the meat and make sure all your meat is covered nicely in the marinade. Um, so this is the basis for the meat and the flavour of the meat. Right, so that's my pork marinated. So this goes into the fridge for a couple of hours to just sit and absorb all those flavours and then let's get on to the rest of the recipe. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to caramelise my pineapple. So I've got a nice big pot here which I'm going to just put on heat so that it'll be nice and hot by the time my pineapple goes in. So I just want to dip it in sugar like this so that it has a lovely even coating. I'm going to use maybe about three pieces today to go with my three pork chops. So just like that until it's really lovely and golden and all the sugar has melted and it's become a lovely dark brown colour. Right, so that's the pineapple dusted. So I'm going to add some butter into the pan now and I'm going to let that melt. So the butter is just melting slowly and I'm just going to get it all around the base of the pan. I love caramelising fruit and anything for that matter in butter because it has a lovely fragrance and it really helps the caramel to develop really nicely. So we need this nice and hot uh, when, for when we go to put the pineapple in because we want the pineapple to brown almost um, really quickly. Yeah, so I think that's hot enough. So I'm just going to add my pineapple. And I'm going to just keep moving this around because there's going to be a lot of liquid that comes out of the pineapple as all the juices come out. But we want to keep moving it around so it really burns pretty fast. So this smells really lovely right now. It smells fruity and there's a lovely smell of burning sugar in there as well. So, okay, so it's still cooking. Okay, so my pineapple is just cooking now and I think it's about ready to be taken out. Yeah, I think I'm going to take it out. You can see it's just starting to become nice and brown. So I'm just going to take it all around the pan. Yeah. I'm going to take it out because I don't want it to soften too much. <laughs> Just going to take the pineapple out of the pan and I'm going to sear my pork chops now. So the pork has been marinating for a while and I'm going to cook it in the same pan that the pineapple was in. Just because it's going to taste really amazing. So 
The pork goes in. I'm just going to put in two pork chops for the moment um, because they are really big and I don't want to crowd the pan in any way. So what I'm doing now is I'm not cooking the pork chops fully. I just want them to kind of sear and get a lovely golden colour. And so I can smell the soy sauce and the um, jaggery really caramelising and becoming delicious. And you can see that the chops in the edges especially have got a lovely dark brown colour which is what we want. So what we want to do is we just want to sear it there, just like this, so that it's lovely and golden. Just going to get my board nearby because we are going to cook it all the way through in the sauce as well. And I'm just going to keep it here to rest for a few minutes. And I'm good. So I'm going to start making my sauce now. And I'm going to use an onion, first of all. I just want to chop it up. I'm going to chop it fairly finely because it will be a part of the sauce. And I'm not going to be pureeing this sauce at the end. You can puree it if you want a smooth sauce, but I like having a little bit of chunks in it. So that's my onion chopped. And I'm also going to chop some celery here and the leaves which I'm just going to keep aside for the moment in my cooking and celery in particular works really well with pork. It's got a um, slight bitter sweetness to it which works really well especially in this dish. So I'm just going to roughly chop the celery leaves as well. So I'm using the same pan that I used for the pork and the pineapple because I want to keep all that flavour in the sauce. And I'm just going to add a little bit more butter just so that my veggies don't stick. And I'm going to add my onion. It really doesn't have to be very hot because you just want your veggies to cook down. You don't really need them to fry. And I'm going to add some garlic as well. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of salt and just give it a good stir. So while my veggies are cooking, you can see it's starting to take all the little bits of the caramel that has been stuck onto the edges is going to be absorbed by the veggies. I'm going to get on to the secret part of this recipe, which is my secret ingredient, Marmite. So, like I said, um, this recipe comes from a time where people didn't have access to um, ingredients like soya sauce. So they had to make do with some of the stuff that they already did. So that's where the Marmite comes into play because, I mean, let's face it, Marmite is a pretty old school ingredient. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my marmite into the pan. So there we go. So this is the basis of our sauce and it's got a really lovely savoury flavour to it because that lovely umami flavour in the marmite will work really well with the salty and the sweet and the sour notes that we are going to put into this. So I'm just going to let that bubble up. So remember the little bit of jaggery that we had reserved from our marinade? I'm going to add some of that in here just to reinforce the sweetness because Marmite is quite a savoury ingredient so you want something sweet to really balance that out and I want to stir it in nicely so that there aren't any lumps. Mm, it's beginning to smell really great. I can really smell the Marmite coming through. Right, so you want this to really bubble up and actually start reducing very slowly. And while that's going, I'm going to add my lime. And um, this is actually a citrus that's very similar to kaffir lime. 
I actually have a tree in my back garden and you can see that it's really really juicy and it's quite tart and sour as well so I'm just going to squeeze in just about a cheek of lime So we're just going to let this cook for a few minutes now until it starts reducing and thickening. So my sauce is cooking down nicely and I'm going to add my pork and my pineapple into it now uh, because remember the pork was just seared only and I want it to cook all the way through. So I'm just going to lay down the pieces of pork in with the sauce and there's quite a bit of the juices in the pork that has come out while the pork was resting which I'm going to put as well the pineapple goes in there as well we just want this to cook really nicely right so the pork is cooking nicely I think it's almost done I'm just going to put these um, slices of pineapple into the sauce just so that they can absorb the sauce and also impart that lovely caramelized pineapple flavor into the sauce. Uh, yeah, I think my pork is cooked. It feels like it's cooked. I'm going to test it in a minute just to make sure that it has cooked by taking my knife and I'm going to test it at the, the bone itself because that's what takes the longest time to cook. And if you see when I run my knife through, if the liquid uh, that comes out of the pork is clear and you can't really see any pink, that means that it has cooked all the way through. And I think this is ready, so I'm just going to switch it off and get ready to plate up. So just before I plate up, I've got some lime leaf here, which has a lovely fragrance because it's fresh lime that I've just plucked from the tree. And I'm going to just snip in a little bit of this lime leaf just to give it that really wonderful aroma and just le reinforce that citrus flavor that's in the sauce. Mm, I can, it smells lovely. The lime that just went through, it gives everything such a lovely fragrance. So you don't really need to cook it through. This is more like a garnish, uh, but I want it just gently warmed through. Right, so my pork is ready to serve now. So I'm just going to keep it here. And I'm going to place the chops on my serving platter. Pineapple right on top. And I'm just going to get, I'm going to keep this aside. So this is what has that punchy flavour um, and that lovely sweet and sour flavour that we like. So I'm just going to put some sauce on the bottom of the dish as well. I'm going to snip in a little bit more lime leaf right on top. So there you have it. That is my sweet and sour pork chops. So just going to give it a quick taste now and I'm just going to cut off a little bit of the end. Mm. The freshness of the herbs is coming through as well as, as well as that lovely tang that the lime is bringing it. This is my sweet and sour pork chops which is at its core my grandmother's recipe. Um, so from all of us here at Hi TV. This is my homemade. Welcome back to another episode of Homemade with me, Rolando Gunasekara. Today I'll be teaching you how to make an amazing fruit tart, or like I would like to call it, a la creme fruit.
I will start by mixing <coughs> the flour with the butter. The flour and the butter. And I will also add the sugar. And using my mixer, I will mix it. First, start at a low speed just to make sure everything is evenly mixed. Once you see the butter starting to clump and be crumbly, you can add the egg. You can see the egg combining very nicely and not making the flour or the rest of the batter too watery. Just increase the speed just to give it more power. You will see your dough becoming very um, soft and very creamy. Not to worry because now you let it rest and the next step is to take everything out of the bowl, put it into a plastic wrap. A bag is fine as well and let it chill in the fridge or freezer for at least an hour before you move on to the next step. So now I've taken my dough out of the fridge. Take it out of my plastic bag. And you will see it has a nice texture. Bit uh, rubbery, very pliable and very easy to use. Give it a bit of a mix because it is a bit hard being in the fridge. But you don't want to mix it too much because you will end up tensing the dough and creating more gluten, making it very rubbery and very hard. Give it a little more mix. And when you start to feel it being soft, that's when you start to use it. So, flour on the table, spread it nice and evenly. Dough down, flour on top, just so it doesn't stick to the rolling pin. A little more on the rolling pin is fine as well. Then you start to roll out the dough. You want to get it as even as possible, so every time you roll it, lift it up, spread the flour around and turn it. Spread the flour around and it's turned. If you see it getting too sticky as such, don't worry, flour is your best friend in this case. You can keep using as much as you like. Just keep rolling it out to fit whatever mold you plan to put it into. In my case, this is the mold I will be using. And I've already coated it with uh, canola oil, but you can use butter or any other substance that you use to line tins in your house. You can play with it a bit, just stretch it out using your fingertips if you're used to it. If not, you can directly place it into the pan. Try as much as you can to stretch it out, but be, be careful not to tear it. And then with your thumbs, push down into it. As such. You can use both hands, no problem. Just make sure you evenly press down the corners because if you don't, what's going to happen is one side will bake more than the other and one side will be thinner than the other, which will end up cracking or breaking the tart. Once you've done that, take a knife and using the bladed side away from you, if that makes sense, so this would be the bladed side, using the opposite side, cut away from you. Using this technique, you can even out the sides so that it's perfect. And cut off any excess bits of dough. And there you have it. Make tiny holes before baking so that the heat does not get trapped and it doesn't create bubbles or yard pockets. And I'm off to bake this now. I'll see you soon. Now my tart is baked, it has a beautiful color, not too dark, not too light, 
and it's nice and firm. Um, so the beauty about this tart is, the a la creme fruit tart, is that you can use any fruits that you like. And you can use any amount of fruits that you like. So I will first start by whipping the whipped cream. And now as you can see, the whipped cream is starting to thick. I'm coming to the point where I will stop because it has a beautiful shine right now. Yeah, that would be the end of the whipped cream. And now I will take my piping bag and I will fill it with whipped cream. So the amount of whipped cream I have used for this recipe is 500 uh, milliliters. Depending on the size of the tart, you can use more, you can use less if you don't like to have too much dairy. Usually another thing I do with the whipped cream is I add vanilla just to give it a bit more flavor because anchor whipped cream even though it's very good in texture it does lack sweetness in flavor and now I will pipe in a circular motion the cream into the tart. You want to make sure your hands are giving the same amount of pressure throughout so that it's even throughout. Time to cut and decorate my tart. There you go. On to the next fruit. For this I'm using uh, peaches. So carefully slice half moons and build another border around the next layer. There you go. And next we will move on to the kiwi. Now the kiwi is a personal favorite fruit of mine. So you wanna cut thin layers. Place them you like. Next, I will move on to the grapes. So these grapes are seedless, so you can just throw them on wherever you want. I like to throw them in addition with the green grapes, um, one after the other. So I put a green grape, I put a a uh, purple grape, I put a green grape, I put a purple grape. I can't even begin to tell you guys how nice this smells. And I really want to try this one. And here you go. So now I will use my glaze and coat the fruits. So they keep their fresh look longer. There you have it, the a la creme fruit tart. Where do I cut this from? Uh, I like strawberries, uh, like I've said in a previous episode, so I am going to go for a strawberry part. There you go, so only the strawberry for me. Oh, that's a lot of strawberries. The cream in that tart was amazing. The strawberries, amazing. The fruits, really good. Thank you for watching Homemade with me, Rolanda Gunasekara, and I will see you next time.